Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video I'm going to have the latest from the live radar, run for the latest UKV, have a look at the precipitation and the temperature over the next five days as we still have reasonably dry and warm conditions over the coming days but those days are now numbered by the end of the week especially into the weekend we're going to start to see cloud rain and cooler conditions returning to the northwest and as we progress into the start of next working week those conditions will become widespread and could become fairly persistent throughout the second half of the month there's still a lot to play for but there is looking like a high chance that we do have some really unsettled conditions especially around the middle of the month and they could as i said drag through much of the second half of April. We'll be able to look at that in detail on the latest longer range charts, the GFS, GM, ECMWF, and of course the ensembles, all doing it in a slightly different way. We're starting to though see some similarities between those runs in the positioning of the low pressure could be slow moving and could contain some pretty cold air, perhaps even some warm air mixing in at times. And that sort of collision could provide some really heavy rain or even some early season thunderstorms. So do remember if you enjoy videos make sure to like and subscribe and remember to follow me on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. Now if we start on the live radar as expected, very little going on at the moment, no precipitation or any real, real major clouds really across much of the British Isles. Bit of cloud down the east coast and that will increase overnight tonight. Wednesday we could have quite a bit of cloud across eastern areas but generally speaking still warm and sunny elsewhere. Now I'm recording this in the evening around half eight and you can see as we put on the temperatures that again it's a fairly mild day a little bit colder because of a bit of a stronger easterly wind and that will cause that thicker cloud overnight into Wednesday. So again west is the best but you can see for half eight temperatures still well into the double digits it is pretty decent indeed out there. Now, if you go over to the latest UKV now, you can still see sunny and dry over the coming days. You can see as we head into Wednesday, though, a bit more cloud down those eastern coasts, which unfortunately, again, will hold those temperatures down. But really, it is just those far eastern areas. Most other regions are sunny, dry and warm. Progressively into Thursday, it's a similar pattern. The east got a bit of cloud, but it does burn away. But then slowly, that high pressure starts to shift positioning. So no longer seeing an easterly flow because the high pressure is sinking. More cloud, though, pushing into northern and western areas. And into Friday, we start to see them arrival. Some properly thick cloud and bits and bobs of rain. Nothing too heavy at this stage, but it starts to increase in intensity becomes more widespread into Saturday and generally speaking into Sunday a lot more unsettled a lot more heavy showers even a bit of wintriness just generally thicker cloud as we progress through into Sunday morning we're expecting that activity to increase throughout Sunday and then become widespread through Monday and Tuesday as we start to see low pressure arriving from the northwest now, do look at the max temperatures you can see earlier this morning, pretty cold, and this afternoon, once again, temperatures are into the mid to high teens, especially warm in the west. That will continue into Wednesday again, a pretty cold morning. And again, in the far east, still a little bit chilly with that thicker cloud, further westwards, again, milder, but not quite as warm as it has been recently, as, of, as a result of that more widespread cloud. Progressively into Thursday, as the high pressure sinks, the warm temperatures will become a little bit more widespread, more 15 to 19 degrees as that high pressure sinks. And the same can be said for Friday. Again, another very warm day, 20 to 22 for large swathes of England and Wales. But look at the north and west, where it has been warmest at times over the past week, starting to cool down. You see that, especially on Sunday, where actually eastern areas are warmest and that's because the wind direction has completely shifted to a northwesterly with northern and western areas now seeing those cool cloudy just about into double digit days and progressive into sunday we would expect those milder conditions in the southeast to start to dissipate away as that cloud does slowly build in now if you look at the latest gfs you see high pressures in control at the moment no signs of any breakdown but it does occur very quickly over the coming days the high pressure slowly sinks southwards and then before you know it by the weekend we're on the cusp of low pressure pushing back in off the north atlantic 
with that low pressure pushing in, it does start to introduce colder air as well. And you see that northwesterly wind does only make very slow movements, but steady movements nonetheless, into the start of next working week. And you can see low pressure replaces high pressure. And interesting signs of the positioning of some of these lows diving southwards towards Iberia. Now, that might not have direct impacts for the UK, these individual lows, but what it does do is it bigs, brings big amplification to the jet stream. We remain under lower pressure, but you can see these more southerly winds across parts of Central Europe. This could drag up some very warm air. And unfortunately, because we're under the lower pressure, we wouldn't see dry, sunny or even hot conditions that parts of Central and Eastern Europe could see. But what we'd be instead is in the temperature clash. The colliding temperatures here could produce significant rain across the British Isles. Cold air coming down from Greenland, warm air coming in from Africa and the Mediterranean. If we put on the precipitation, you can see heavy thunderstorms and longer spells of rain developing within that divide. So it could be really horrible indeed. So that is something we need to get a very very close eye on uh, as that could crop up and produce some significant precipitation but again very specific conditions needed for that this gfs run just just shows you uh, a sort of a perfect example of that temperature coll collision but we'll have to wait and see exactly for those details Beyond that, westerly flow does start to take back over and you can see some cold air could dig in at times. It's a bit of high pressure towards Greenland, so we could actually go really chilly here into the final third of April. But if we watch this GFS very carefully, minus five line comes in very cold. But then look what happens. A southerly wind arrives and it could go very warm, if not hot. So from the minus five line to the plus 10 line in the space of about 36 hours. Uh, again, that sort of temperature collision, that sort of change, as said, could bring more significant rain and some thunderstorms as well so gfs definitely on board with a lot of low pressure but also lots of colliding air masses lots of lots of chopping and changing which this time of year can bring lots of heavy rain and some quite big disruption so again it could play out slightly differently those temperature clashes might not be there or might not be as extreme but if we take this gfs run for example then yeah we could be in for a pretty wild second half of april now, if you compare to the GM, again, high pressure slowly sinking southwards over the coming days. Eventually, northwesterly winds arrive, and again, low pressure sat over the top of us. You can see there are those southerly winds, but they're much more eastern based across Europe, and they're not quite as strong. So not as much of that warm air heading towards the UK. And what that means is that rain is there. It's hefty, and there's lots of showers, but it might not be as significant as the GFS was showing. And out towards day 10, again, we're staying within the lower pressure. Again, the jet stream digging southwards, dragging up some milder air at times, a bit of blocking towards Greenland, and you can see an eclectic mix of low pressure and heavy rain. So again, not great from the GM. Does it slightly differently, but probably, probably pretty similar outcomes if we're being completely honest. And then finally, if we compare it to the latest ECM that we have, again, high pressure sinking southwards and eastwards, low pressure coming in off the Atlantic, cold and unsettled, and actually very similar to the GM. Quite a big Atlant uh, Greenland and Atlantic block starting to appear, which would drag some cold air in from the Arctic, but equally some milder air mixing in. And again, similar to the other runs, just kind of in the middle, in that temperature collide. And in the end, it just means that we'd see lots of heavy rain, lots of unsettled conditions, and we must say goodbye to these beautiful, sunny, dry days. There'd be no guarantees of any dry conditions if this pattern does occur a classic spring temperature clash cold air to the north coming up against warm air to the south with low pressure parked right over the top of us it's one of these sort of events that could produce lots and lots of persistent heavy rain as i said even some early season thunderstorms now, if you finish by looking at the latest ensembles, you see it's pretty well backed up here. Warm over the next kind of five or six days. And then again, temperatures dropping over the weekend around that 13th, 14th for London, around the 11th or 12th. So later on this week for those northern and western areas. And then again, upper air temperatures hovering in and around average, but could be very up and down depending 
on those temperature king collisions. And you can see the GFS operational run goes down to minus five and then skyrockets. It's this thick green line here. So not all ensemble members agree with it, but definitely some up and down there. And again, you can see lots of heavy rain within the GFS output as well. So not good at all. Two meter temperatures look pretty decent over the next five days, definitely on the up as we start to see that high pressure sinking. But then into next week, temperatures will be back towards average or even below average with maybe 11 or 12 degrees at best at times when that heavy rain does push in. And finally, if we compare to the latest ECM at WF, again, we'll have a look at the midnight run. Uh, you can see again, very warm, dropping away through the weekend and then again, looking very unsettled and reasonably cool there as we progress into the second half of April. So unfortunately, it does look like we are going to see an April of two halves. We can't say what's going to happen in the final five or six days of April, but at least from around the 13th, 14th onwards. And for that week following that, it could be really quite horrible indeed. Looks like we're going to have two weeks of stunning blue skies, lots of sunshine and warm conditions. And could be followed by two weeks of very horrible, heavy rain, thunderstorms, lots of cloud and very variable temperatures. So unfortunately, we've seen the best of spring. We could be seeing the worst of spring coming in to next week. Of course, I'll keep you updated. Hopefully things don't turn out as bad as some of the runs like the GFS are showing. But of course, we'll have to wait for the details from the UKV over the coming days. Um, and of course, I'll keep you all up to date with that as it comes out. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed subscribing if you new. Make sure you enjoy all that sunshine over the coming days. And I'll see you again for another video soon.